What you see here is is a Samsung tablet. It's a 7 inch Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 and this is running an application that I've recently written to interface with a embedded system and this system controls the ignition of an automobile. Um, typically a, an eight cylinder internal combustion engine for a classic car. Shown here is the timing um, curve that's related to the mechanical timing in advance. There's another curve right here and it's related to the vacuum advance. So this is of an engine anywhere between probably the 50s up to the um, mid to late 70s um, used a distributor with a centrifugal advance and a um, vacuum advance. Um, this system does all that advance control electronically and so a mechanical advance is not required and a vacuum advance module is not required. Um, it does have a sensor for the vacuum and it monitors the distributor signals and measures those and that's the way it comes up with RPM and the base timing and from there it electronically generates the timing very accurately compared to the old mechanical methods. What you see here is a real-time display. Um, I have a simulator which is driving this ignition system that simulates a distributor turning. Sometimes I use a drill and other times I use another microcontroller to simulate the distributor moving and then I can take and do measurements and I've actually driven this car and it it runs very well. The top one is RPM and as you can see it's this light goes on that's when it's in the over speed uh, mode and that would actually shut down the ignition. When we're in this curve here you can see where this comes down and drops the timing. That is a good way to um, control the over speed on an engine because it continues to burn um, the fuel mixture on the way out of the engine and it doesn't contribute to much power, it just retards the timing. I'm going to show how an adjustment can be made to this curve and I'm going to migrate over a few points and then I'm going to hit the plus key and I just hit the minus key too. You can see where that happened and then I can take and put that back um, to more of a normal position right there. Um, and you can move along and do that wherever you want to modify the timing. Um, to do this mechanically a person would have to go in and play with springs and um, limits and um, stops in the slots and all sorts of things. This is much easier and the same thing can be done on the vacuum where this is actually a, a manifold pressure versus a, a vacuum sensor and they're basically the slopes different but you can get the same same feel. It's a more modern way of doing it and let's see I'll, I'll bump up a value there and bump down and bump back up and um, I can move along and if I want to modify oops I just hit the wrong button. This, this over here is the base engine things where you can adjust the base timing and we can actually if we click in there we can go over and and we can change the base timing and then when we go back to the the curve in here you can see I have 14 degrees set and that's the 14 there this is actually the lowest speed that's the highest speed this is the over speed and it's set for eight cylinders there's also a chart that can play and this is real-time data it's the data that's actually being presented here only this is being logged and stored in time and this is happening at every 250 milliseconds. It takes a reading. This is a half a second. This would be something if you're logging going down the highway you're going to grab a bunch of data you would probably go at a slower rate but if you go here then this is happening every 50 milliseconds and this would be good for an acceleration run. This blue line if you can actually see it that that's actually uh, the manifold pressure and I have a way over here I'm going to go change and you'll be able to see it change. Okay I just lowered that and you can see that by when I lowered this this timing actually 
is um, going to increase some as if it had more vacuum. See where this is higher? Now I'm going to go back and go the other way with it. And this would be if you put the engine under more load. And as you can see, this timing here actually dropped. So it's the automatic way of changing the, the timing. And there's different sensors that I can put in there and actually make the sensor work for a, a boost application in turbos, and I've done that. There's also a data logger, and if I click this, it'll actually log the data to an Excel file or a, a file that can be opened with Excel and that can be used in more detail to analyze what's happening and sometimes it's nice to take the data you, you can tune while you're driving the car but then take the data and look at it and you can often look for a, a weakness or some place where you want to improve and then you can try to change the timing in those areas and, and actually make the engine run a little better um, there's also this feature here where this changes the scale on this side to the green which is the total advance or I can change it to blue and that's what the manifold pressure is or the RPM so you can actually make measurements off of these scales.